Hey folks, we're talking REITs, real estate investment trusts. And while I personally believe they're better cash flowing assets to own today than actual buying physical rental units, physical pieces of real estate. And that's coming from a guy that lives near Toronto, one of the most expensive real estate markets in the world. I mean, a condo here is going to cost you 600000 If you could cough that up front, think about this, guys. You might be able to rent it for 2200 a month, walk away after condo fees and taxes, maybe... Fourteen, fifteen hundred a month. That's that's eighteen thousand a year in total net cash flow on something that cost you six hundred k. That's a three percent yield, and that's not us talking about anything to do with capital gains on the backside of it. Where as I can take my money right now, go buy a REIT that I think is fairly valued in cash flow anywhere from a three, four, seven percent yield. Actually, get really good capital growth. It's it's kind of the pivotal way that I'm always shifting to while I wait for the real estate market to cool off, if it ever does cool off. So we're going to go over one new REIT that I think is really going to suit my portfolio well. And first, we're going to go over the REITs that I currently own and some other ones that I relatively think are interesting. So in the clarity of my transparency, do the channel a favor, folks. Hit that like button. Taking it off, let's talk about Rio Can, the largest holding in my stock portfolio. And this kind of breaks my cardinal rules because I kind of demand two things from REITs that I buy. One, stock capital growth. And that, that company actually has to be doing something to keep the equity growing, in my opinion. And I also want dividend growth. I want that capital increasing year over year as though I am increasing the rent on those tenants if I were to own a physical piece of real estate. So why the heck am I messing around with a mall REIT? Well, I, not only do I think they had an a really good underlying stable tenant basis with things like LCBO, Shoppers Drug Mart. You got some grocers in there. They did get hit during the pandemic, but that was the value proposition to me because if we zoom in here, guys, for the year to date, if you were buying this in that $14, $15, 16 $17 range, you as well as I have been making a lot of money here because it it is done very well as a recovery play. And I honestly think from where it currently sits, we still have a bit of room to grow and it was drastically undervalued in the crash that we currently went through. So that was the only reason that I really went heavy into this one. And it's only the largest position in my portfolio because it's grown into that. And I haven't really taken any profit off the capital gain side yet. And just talking about the other rule, which was dividend increases, this definitely you failed at all of those combined here, folks. I mean, it, it cut the dividend by 30% from 12 cents to 8 cents. And this isn't something that I would be too fond of buying into right now. But if Again, you were picking it up on the discounts that we were, you still have an insanely healthy yield. I mean, I'm capping in a 5.6% yield with a company that is starting to see much more stable cash flow. We're getting on the other side of the lockdown here. And on top of that, guys, I understand it so well because it's personally in my backyard. That is why I was so attracted to this REIT originally, because the vast majority of their properties are in Toronto. And I've looked at them personally, and I think they have some high value going toward it into the future, along with their future expectations to, to kind of continue diversifying away from, say, retail into a little more office, a little more residential, and really nicely round that portfolio off. Now, my second read here, guys, one that meets all of my cardinal rules, Stag Industrial, the only other REIT I currently hold in my portfolio, which as well, doing insanely good. I mean, we are up pretty fantastically on this one since we were buying it right at that $30 range. And right now it's only yielding out a 3.8% dividend. It is rather expensive, I'd say from a PE and evaluation standpoint. And just like Rio can, unfortunately, I wouldn't be as inclined to buy it here, folks. And why do I say that? Well, I mean, like I said, they, they made all the cardinal rules. I mean, we're seeing the dividends increase continually year over year. We're seeing good equity growth, but the dividend yield needs to, to come back into a range that's more attractive than 3.8% in my opinion. I mean, look at what we locked in when we were buying this at that $30 range, a 4.6% yield, guys. Absolutely incredible stuff. And what does Stag do? Never heard of it, guys. It's basically a logistics uh, center. They basically deal with warehousing for things like Amazon, BMW, car parts. I mean, it's an incredibly well-diversified REIT. Their largest tenant is Amazon, and it only makes up 3% of their income portfolio. Massive, massive REIT here, and I would personally be more inclined to buy it if it dips, and we can see those yields start to increase again, because again, just like Rio can, for a 4.2% yield from the current valuation, and same with Stag at a 3.8% yield at the current valuation, I would look for a healthy pullback before I'd make an entry here. And these have a lot of cool Canadian counterparts, because this is a US company, but there's a Canadian company called Granite real estate investment trust. And this is literally a logistics center 
uh, primarily focused in Canada with their largest tenant being uh, Magna International. And I think Magna makes up about 30% of their total tenant income, which is why I'm always kind of turned off from the Canadian counterparts because they are great companies. This as well has done a lot of dividend increases, been great growth behind it. It's just the matter of you're not getting as diversified as you are with something like a stag. So putting those aside, those are basically the two REITs that I currently own. Now, why am I looking to add a third one. I've talked about many on this channel, lots out there guys, but it has to fit in my portfolio in a bunch of different ways. And one that I've been kind of frustrated with is finding the right healthcare company to add to my portfolio because I need more healthcare. I only got Johnson & Johnson. I'm really underweighted. I feel like healthcare has been underlooked at since this pandemic's been going on. They traded better discounts to the general market. And I think I found one that I find relatively attractive here called Medical Properties Trust. This one would definitely squeeze into adding that allocation of healthcare to the portfolio. It has an incredible starting yield of 5.54%, a 21 PE, much reasonable, and is actually trading down from its all-time highs here. And it meets all of the cardinal rules. When we're talking about capital growth and we're talking about dividend increases, this one has actually been the best dividend increaser of all the REITs that I've already talked about here today. And if you don't know what this company does, guys, it's an insanely well-diversified medical company that deals with everything from hospital beds, licensed beds, 44,009 countries, 425 facilities in a 20.9 billion dollar total portfolio of assets here and if you just take a look at the numbers I don't know why this is even trading down I mean they actually grew in the pandemic which is no surprise right it's a medical property company but just like Johnson & Johnson one that I own as well Johnson & Johnson saw a haircut on surgeries because obviously people weren't going in to get surgeries done and that was something that also relates to this company because this company had a, a halt back on part of their portfolio that was directly related to surgeries because people just couldn't get in and now that we're getting to the other side of this we're starting to rebook these and it's this catalyst moving forward for this company in my opinion and just again incredible growth guys really well balanced portfolio and another reason that it's relatively interesting is during the low interest rate environment they restructured their leases and basically got it so some of these leases go up for 20 years they naturally take in uh the compounded growth of inflation so they're actually increasing the cost on the tenants that's stated in these actual lease agreements like they've gone above and beyond here on, on many different fronts with this company and i really like it for where it sits because i can add it to my uh corporation and the reason that's so great is because usually REIT income is classified as regular income you have to pay your marginal tax rates however if i add it to my corporation my corporate marginal tax rates are a lot less making that 5.5 percent yield even juicier so this is one that has definitely made my radar and i want to know what you guys specifically think about this in the comment section below because the valuations make sense incredible yield growth i mean it looks like the medical field is about to continue to blow up i don't know if telehealth could affect this negatively but this is mostly for in-person uh, medical stuff right general acute hospital care uh rehabilitation hospitals behavioral health facilities long-term acute care hospitals so it's relatively interesting stuff and like i said all of these companies have a canadian counterpart this one would be in particular to being northwest health properties real estate investment trust it is so similar on many fronts but again guys not nearly as good way more volatility in the stock price i haven't done as much due diligence it is relatively globally diversified but i would still take the u.s counterpart so these are absolute wonderful reits and i just love looking through these because i feel like they really line up well with the growth side of my portfolio because we're talking about google apple uh amazon tesla those companies aren't going to yield anything right so i find if you can get those higher yields off some really good stable foundational reits it makes up for the lackluster yield on some of those times when those tech stocks don't perform as well it's kind of that balancing of your portfolio but i pass the question off to you what do you guys think about my thoughts and my opinions surrounding the reit sector right now i'd love to hear about it in that comment section below but stay cool stay awesome and i look forward to catching you tomorrow